If you want to describe the situation in Kashmir in a word, I would use the word silent. But how deep and abiding the silence is. My point is that this silence could go either way. Now we need to look at the context in which this silence could go either way. China has built up a tremendous amount of uh, uh, war preparation on the, the entire Eastern Front. And on the other hand, Pakistan has basically taken over Afghanistan. That is what happened. And it has the support of China. At the time when this, the takeover was taking place in July and August, it had the support of Iran and uh, Russia as well. It seems to also maybe have uh, some support from uh, Turkey and some other key players on the international stage. Now, in this context, I think it's very important that we take into account what might happen in the subcontinent. I have been predicting for a decade now, which I said that three elements, three prongs of a triad of national security challenges would gradually converge. And this is China's expansionism, revanchism, Pakistan's uh, desire to take over uh, Jammu and Kashmir, and the mass unrest in Kashmir. Now, these three prongs could now be converging right now in the next few months, given the circumstances that we see on both the West and the East. And of course, the silence. And this silence needs to be dealt with. The government keeps talking about development. Nobody can match the kind of development that happened under Bakshi Ghulam Mohammed when he was Prime Minister of Jammu and Kashmir between 1953 and 1963. That is unmatched, unmatchable. What we need is with respect and with a genuine desire to, and with a transparent uh, desire to make uh, friends and make amends, we need to reach out to Kashmiri civil society. And this needs to be done through political leaders, through uh, civil society leaders, through educationists, and through religious leaders. And this needs to be done as soon as possible. It is the need of the hour.